This wire-free robot lawnmower revolutionized my yard maintenance. With dual cutting blades, obstacle avoidance, all-wheel drive, GPS virtual boundaries, and multi-zone mapping, it's truly remarkable. I've been putting the Luba 2 through its paces for the last few months, and this thing went far beyond my expectations, but I'll get to that shortly. So I actually have a bit of a problem with a mower, and that is the fact that I don't actually have real grass. I've got fake turf in my yard, so nothing to mow. But the good news is my parents have a giant yard. They are on a half acre and have a ton of things that I can mow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack up, head over there, and we're going to set up that mower over there. I also, at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about some of the experiences that I've had and some of the pointers that I'd recommend you doing if you want to pick one of these up. I also want to thank Momotion for sending out this mower and also sponsoring today's video. All right, this is not what I was expecting at all. As we can see in the front yard, it is nice and green and ready to mow. I was coming out here to the backyard. I don't get out here that often because my parents do live kind of far away. And something that I was surprised to discover is we've got a side yard over here, nice green, something that we can mow. And then um, behind me over here is we've got a giant field of dead grass. Apparently last year, my parents' sprinklers went out over here, but with fall and winter and rains and everything happening, forgot about it we never fixed it and they don't really come outside that much and now that i'm here i realize that this whole half of the yard is dead so now we are going to make a new plan the new plan is that we are going to test out this lawnmower to see if it can do nice green lawn on this side and do kind of an open field concept over here maybe you got an open field not everyone has the best yards this definitely is not as good as some of the other YouTubers that I see out there with a perfectly manicured lawn. This is one that has been around for a while and does need a little bit of work. And now we've got a big open field here. So if you are somebody like that, that maybe wants to maintain an open field, stick this lawnmower out there, have it run, then we're gonna be testing that out in today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. But let's get started by seeing what comes with the Luba 2. Inside of the box, we get a quick start guide, the Luba 2 all wheel drive, it's power supply, an extra set of blades, the security key that needs to go into the back. We have an installation kit and the charging station. We also have the RTK reference station, which is what connects it to the satellites and allows it to set up its GPS. We've got the RTX extension cable, which is up to 32.8 feet, RTX power supply, and the RTX ground mount. Now, when it comes to the Luba 2, there are four different models that you can get. There is the 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, and 10,000 models. Each one has a yard size that it can cover and the amount of zones that it can create. And actually with each model, there is a sub model that ends with an H. This means that it has a cutting height of two inches all the way up to four inches. With the standard model, it has a cutting height of one inch to 2.7 inch. Now for me, Momotion sent out the 3000 model that covers up to 3000 square meters or 0.75 acres. And since my parents' grass is low, I got just the standard one sent out and we're gonna be cutting this at about two inches. Now, as far as the design, Momotion went with an F1 race car look, and I love that. There are sensors all over the place to help it avoid obstacles. There is a bumper on the front, we've got 3D vision on the top, and then ultrasonic radar sensors in the middle and sides. There are manual controls on the top for power, mow, home, start, and a giant emergency stop button if you need it, so you don't need to use the app. Above all of that, there is a water sensor, so it won't mow if it rains. On the very back is a slot for the key that is required to make it start. Behind the gray door just to the right is a slot for a SIM card, and below that are charging contacts and a rear sensor. It's all-wheel drive, which helps it get up hills. It says that it can traverse an 80% slope or 38-degree hill. The funky-looking wheels on the front are called Omni Wheels, which will allow the mower to do a zero-point turn, and it also has front suspension for a smoother ride. Flipping the mower over, we see that it has dual cutting discs with four blades on each disc, giving it a 15.7 inch cutting path for some great looking lines like you would see from a push mower. The blades do spin freely and are sharp enough to cut grass and plants, but because they have some give, it won't damage the blades when it hits a rock or a stick. 
This also prevents rocks and sticks from shooting out like it would on a traditional mower. Now onto the setup and install. It's pretty easy and straightforward as you would expect. Find a place for the docking station, plug it in, and use the mounting screws to secure it down. This is important because once you set up the map in the app, none of the hardware can move or it'll throw everything off. Next, we need to install the RTK satellite. We'll start by stringing the cable through the top of the pole, connecting the poles together, and then connecting the bottom ground stake. Now, the placement of the RTK system takes a little thought because it has to have a clear view of the sky. This means that it cannot go right up against your house. They do sell a wall mounting kit that will allow you to get the RTK higher and out from the roofline of the house if you want to do that. We're going to get all the cables connected up into the back of the dock, Put the mower on the dock to start charging it while we get everything connected in the app. All right, so I've already created a map for my front yard and side yard. And now what I want to do is I want to create one for the main backyard. So we're going to click on create. We are going to go to area, click on start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our controls right here. I'm going to go ahead and say click to leave. So it's just going to take it out of its base station. Perfect. I'm going to go ahead and use the remote controls right here. Now we do have to be in connection to Bluetooth and then I'm going to go ahead and use our controls right here to control it where I want it to start. So we're going to go ahead and get it started and then I'm going to go ahead and create the map for the main backyard here. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so the first thing that I need to do is I need to get the mower over to the section that I want to start mapping. I'm going to use the controls on the phone to guide it over where I want it to start and when I have my starting point, I can then use the controls on the phone to drive it like an RC car and drive it around the border of the area that I want to do. Now, I don't want to do my entire yard. I want to break mine up into different sections. So I'm going to make sure that I do that in the map creation. And because I need to stay within Bluetooth range of the mower, I'm just going to walk behind it. And that way I have a good idea of the border that I'm going to do. Now, when you're in mapping mode, the mower goes a little bit slower than it typically would when it's doing a mow, which I appreciated because it prevented me from getting a little too crazy around those edges. As I finished up the border of the main section of the yard, all I had to do was bring it back to the starting point and it automatically completed the map for me. All right, now I want to cover some of the features you can expect to see in the app. Looking at the app right here, we have got our mower right there, front and center. To get into the actual settings of this device, I'm gonna go ahead and just tap right in the center here on the actual lawnmower, and it's going to load up my yard. So let's zoom in right here. You can see that's kind of the layout of my yard. I have it broken out into three different sections. As we saw before, we see the play button again where it says mow. We've got manual, so if you want to manually control this thing, you can do that. However, you have to be within Bluetooth range to do that. We have our tasks, which is the same as our schedule. And then we have our map right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on map. It's going to bring it into a horizontal view. And from here, we have a couple more settings. One of them is going to be create. So here is where you're going to create your area, your no-go zone, your channel. You do have to set up a channel to connect all of your zones together. So in my backyard here, I do have two different areas set up. Even though they kind of overlap each other a little bit, I do still have to set up a channel on where I want those two to connect. So they don't automatically just go from one place to another. You have to actually set up that channel. And then for going to the front yard, I had to set up a channel for it to go specifically through the gate. So it's always gonna go through that channel when going through zones. Um, we also have the ability to do a pattern here. So this is brand new. This was actually just released probably two days ago where you can have your mower actually put a pattern in your lawn if you wanna do that. Pretty interesting, I have not tested it out yet. Another really cool thing that I wanted to show you before we get into the edit is down in the bottom right hand corner, you see FPV. I can go ahead and click on that and it is going to bring up a live camera of the actual mower. So right now it is docked up in my parents' backyard, which is about an hour away from here, but I can monitor it from here and see what is going on. It's been actually pretty helpful to see what the mower is doing and when it's doing it uh, to bring up this view. Now there is no audio, so you can't talk to somebody say on the other end. I did have an issue where I needed my dad to go out there and move the mower because it did get stuck. So I wasn't able to actually have a conversation through this video. This is video only. So it's kind of a cool thing. Um, I like doing it. I've used it a couple times and wanted to bring that up. Last thing on here is we have the button for editing our maps. So you can go in here and let's say I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my main backyard and the three dots on the side here. You can rename it, you can modify it. If you do need to adjust any of your borders, you can modify it through there. Now you do have to be within Bluetooth connectivity, so that won't come up right now for me. 
let's back out of here. And I wanna show you the options you get for an actual Mo. So I'm gonna click on the Mo button and here is what we get for options. So down on the bottom, we can select our areas. Typically for me, I only need to do this for the front yard because there is a gate that I need to have opened up. So I'm gonna unselect the backyard. We're just gonna have the front yard selected. So we have our front yard here. Number one, let's zoom in a little bit right here. And then at the very top, we have got our options. So you can do the once only, or you can set a schedule if you wanna do a weekly task, specific dates or fixed intervals. We've got our cutting height here. We have got our task speed. Now, initially when I did this, I had this at a much lower speed. I think I had it at a 0.3, but now that it's been doing it for a little bit uh, of time, I went ahead and I just boosted mine up to the max speed. Uh, below that, we get to pick our mode or our pattern. So this one right here, you can see is just the perimeter. So just the outside edges. We've got our zigzag. We've got our chessboard pattern. And then we have also got our adaptive zigzag path. I typically like to do either the zigzag or the chest pattern. Below that, we have got our path spacing. So how much you want this to overlap on its spacing. Our obstacle detection mode. This is going to be that front bumper on the front, uh, how you want yours. I've just had mine set up for less touch. Perimeter. This is going to be how many laps it's going to do around the outside of that specific zone. With each lap, I believe it goes in a little bit. So it's not doing the exact same path each time. Each time it brings it in a little bit, which I like. I typically do two to three passes each time. Uh, No-go zones. I don't have any no-go zones set up. So I just leave that at zero. And then we have our option of doing the perimeter or the outside edges first or doing our zigzag pattern first. We can set our cutting path angles. So if you do want to get a bit of an angle on there, you can do that. And then we've got our angle adjuster right here. So you can adjust the angle that you want, your starting progress. And then let's go ahead and take a look. If we bring it in here, I believe that I can click on the preview button and zoom in. And it's going to show me now the path that I selected because I did adjust that angle you can see now the lines on where it's going to go. So we've got the two outside lines around it, and then we've got that new angle that I have selected. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's cancel out of there and let's adjust our, so we had 52% angle, let's bring it back down to no angle, go back to the preview, zoom in, and our lines, yep, our lines are going to look different now. So I like that they have added this preview section. If it was there before this update, I didn't realize it, but I found it in the new update, so I like that they have it so I can see the actual angles I'm going to get before I go ahead and click on that start button. Below that, we have got the area that is going to mow. So we have 176 square meters and then also the time it's going to take. So this is going to give you an idea if you adjust anything up here. So say like I want it to go four laps around before it's going to do the regular one. It said 33 minutes. It's going to give it a second here to update. And now we've got 39 minutes. So it will update after a few seconds. It calculates all of that and then gives you an idea of what you are going to mow. Okay, so what I have learned from using this mower. Uh, first off is that I would say this mower is good at maintaining a yard. So there were certain sections of my parents' yard that haven't been mowed or weed whacked or anything in a long time, big tall weeds. It was able to roll over those, but it didn't do a great job at really cutting those down. I mean, these blades are kind of small. So my takeaway from that was that either mow down that section or have it mowed down if you do have a mower, like a push mower, get it mowed down to a good level. And then this lawnmower here will do a great job at maintaining that lower level. I also found with a yard like my parents is that we still needed to use a weed whacker around some of the edges. So especially in the front, when it was going across the retaining wall or across the top of that retaining wall, it didn't do the best job at getting the edges. There were still some weeds that were growing up there or taller grass that was going to seed. So for some of those sections, I did still need to have a weed whacker just to trim it up a little bit, make it look nice. I would say though, I wouldn't need to weed whack every single week. Maybe it's a once a month thing. So lawnmower, it's doing its thing, maybe run it every two to three days to just kind of maintain what you have out there and then follow it up with maybe a weed whacker once a month, 
was at least my experience in my yard. If you have a well-maintained yard with good lines and this thing can go right on to covering sidewalks and things like that, good edges, then you probably don't need it at all. But that was my experience when using it. Well, overall, I'm actually really impressed with the Mimotion Luba 2. It is super quiet. It does a great job of getting all the areas that we have set up for it. With all of its built-in sensors, it does a perfect job of giving you those perfect lawnmower lines in the grass. And I like that this thing can run as much as I want it to. I can run it every day, I can run it every other day, or once a week. Unlike a traditional lawnmower that needs gas and oil and other parts to run it, I don't have to worry about any of that. This thing gets a charge from its base station and it's off and running. If it runs out of a charge during a mow, it will return back to the base station, charge up, and then head right back out where it left off and continue mowing. As far as maintaining the open field, it worked great. It kept all the weeds chopped down and flat. But like I said, if things are getting too long, I would mow them down first, weed whack them down first, get them to a good maintainable level, and then this thing can take care of the rest. You don't need to worry about it anymore. Anyways, if you guys want to know more about this lawnmower, go ahead and take a look at the links in the description. If this video is helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you guys in the next video.